In today's video, I'm going to answer a question that has caused many arguments between bricklayers. Frog up or frog down? How should you lay your bricks? Let's find out. Okay, in typical Tuesday fashion, there'll be two minutes on the screen somewhere counting down. Probably won't stick to it, but I'm actually going to try this time, see if I can get it in two minutes. So there'll be two minutes on the clock and then let's get going. If anyone is unsure as to what a frog is, a frog is the indentation inside of a brick. Now, I have laid here three bricks in front of you that have all been laid frog up. I want to just give you my two cents about what I believe frog up or frog down, the whole argument, and then I'm going to tell you basically what is right and what is wrong, the technical side of it. So, frog up. The idea is you want to fill these frogs up with mortar so that the wall is strong. Essentially, where I'm plonking that muck in, you've already pushed it in and you have filled up the frogs, filled up that crevice, and this brick I will put straight on top and that will fill that up completely. You want a nice full frog to make sure that that wall is completely strong enough. Now, there's in underneath that brick, you know for a fact that there's absolutely no air pocket and nothing that can impede the strength of your wall. Now, over here, just to, uh, to the side of it, I will lay another brick, but I will lay it frog down. Now, I've done exactly the same as I have done before. I'll put that muck down like so, and I'm ready to lay as I would do normally. Now, generally, I'd put that in frog up like so but what we're going to do is we are going to butter it up and we are going to lay it frog down now by the time you tap that down it wasn't a great deal now can you tell me for certain that that frog is filled with muck because I sure as hell can't. There's probably a little air pocket in there. Now we all know that brick brickwork works in compressive strength. The, the more that compresses down it, the stronger it gets. Now I'll show you a diagram in a moment, which basically shows you that this is not anywhere near as strong as this. So there is one way you can lay a frog down brick and know that the bottom, that the frog is full. So what you do, much like, look, you can see there, there were pockets where there was no muck. So that goes to show that that did not fill that up properly. Some people would say that you can do that. You'll fill up the frog and then lay it. If you ask me, you are making too much work for yourself. Why would you do that? Why would you double, double butter a brick when you can do it this way, put it in once and you're done. This way, it looks like you're laying your bed, filling that in, then laying it. You're taking twice as long to do something that just should take half the amount of time. So those are my two cents. Basically, in my opinion, frog up always. Now you can get uh, bricks with circles, uh, circle, circular holes in them. And again, you wouldn't butter them, you wouldn't sort of fill them up halfway up. You'd, you'd put the muck in the top and it'd fill all the holes up as you go along. Much the same way as you would lay frog down. Uh, frog up, sorry. Now, let me read you something from the Bricklaying Bible. Those of you who don't know what the Bricklaying Bible is, it is the BDA Guide to Successful Brickwork. I have made a video about this before and I cannot sing it enough praises. There'll be a link in the description to this video and also to the book. Okay, so let me read you a quick little extract on the frog up or frog down section in this book. Okay, compressive strength tests on individual bricks generally require the frogs to be filled unless stated otherwise. Engineers use these results when cal calculating the loads that brickwork can support. Bricks without filled frogs will fail at much lower loads, as will the brickwork. One manufacturer states the compressive strength of his bricks or her bricks to be 21 newton, me newton meters per millimeter squared frog up and seven newton millimeters per meter squared frog down. Now that's quite a difference. If bricks are not laid frog up and filled as instructed, the brickwork will not have the strength indicated by the engineer and may crack, spool or even collapse. Okay, so in review, it is basically, it is better to lay frog up. If anyone wants to disagree with me or the Brick Development Association, please do let me know down in the comments why you think frog down is better. I can understand why you would do frog down if you wanted, if you were high on your brickwork to, on one corner of a building and low everywhere else, you wanted to grind down. I understand that you could frog down 
just to grind that down. It is a lot easier to grind down brickwork when laying frog down, but you also must ensure that you fill that, fill that frog up before you do it. But it is not something that I would suggest doing generally laying bricks because it is just not as strong. The frog's there for a reason. They're there to fill up. They're there so that it can make a, a nice connection between bricks, between courses, and it's, it's just a lot less lateral movement because you've got that muck in there because it's gone off and it is solidifying in with the bed joint and the perp. So it's all interconnected and it stops it moving left, right, left and right and up. Well, it doesn't stop it moving up and down because that's compressive strength but a lot less lateral movement because of that. That is my opinion. So the BDA pretty much say, fill up your frogs. You can do it laying it frog down, but a lot of people will generally say, don't do it. And there it goes. It says there, one man in fact just states the compressive strength of his or her bricks to be 21 newton meters frog up and seven newton meters frog down. There's a massive difference between frog up and frog down. So, Hopefully that has answered or at least sparked an argument for this topic. If you do want to argue with me or if you do want to voice your opinion, please do. I love hearing everyone's opinion down in the comments. That's where we will do it. With that being said, please do leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you aren't already. Ring the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Remember, bricks laid, frog up, wages paid. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So take care. See you later. ta -ra. I almost forgot. Last week, I asked you all, to comment on a, vi on, on a post I put on Instagram to win some lines. Had a lot of entries and we have three winners. I asked you to uh, just sort of put a comment down on, my, on that Instagram post and just say which ones you wanted. So we have the winners here. I didn't pick them to make it sort of unbiased. My wife picked them. Um, okay, so here we go. The winner of the Marshalltown lines is nbuild underscore there you go. You are the, the grand winner of the Marshalltown Lines. The next one is Ben Campbell, 203. You are the winner of the Ox Lines. And then we have, finally, Adam Ski underscore B. You want the IMEX Lines. IMEX are on their way to you. Well, they're not on the way to you yet, but they will be. I will be notifying you all via Instagram as soon as this video goes live and then just sort of let me know your address and I will have those sent out to you. Thank you everyone for commenting on that video. I'm pretty sure we'll be doing this again because I'll tell you what, I had quite a bit of fun with that and uh, it seems like you all enjoyed it as well. So yeah, there we go. Those are the winners of the lines. Thank you very much. Take care and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra.